If you like this video, why not subscribe? Good morning, everybody. Happy Labor Day. Here I am in my car doing the uh, weekly recap Q&A show. Yes, even on a holiday. Why? Well, there's always questions to be answered. There's always links to share. And uh, what else are you doing right now? Um, I don't know. Uh, what is this show? Well, it's a show where I share uh, links from the past week that accumulated on the Facebook group and Twitter. And I also gather together some questions that I had that I thought might appeal to a broader audience because all the questions I typically get, I answer, or try to answer personally, either in comments uh, or through emails. But it's kind of like a podcast. Uh, it's mostly just uh, audio, uh, oral, oral information uh, that you can listen to. So you can tab away when you're watching this and do other things. Occasionally you'll get the occasional annotation referring to what video I'm talking about that people are asking about. Um, and if you're wondering why I'm in my car, well, that's because the acoustics are good. I'm using my Sanyo Xacti CG10, which only has on-camera mics. And it doesn't sound too bad. It probably sound better with an actual microphone, but I've tried it before, and it's not that big a difference. So let's get going. Um, you know, something we've been quiet about for a while has been the t-shirts, and uh, the, the black t-shirts haven't been uh, being pre-ordered as well. Um, so if you'd like a black t-shirt, I'll provide a link below, and uh, you can order one of those. Uh, the good news, actually, I guess I haven't been pushing the t-shirts as much because, I mean, I still want them to get to the 30 so we can get the pre-orders out, but uh, manufacturer is also getting a direct-to-garment printer, which means we won't have to do pre-orders anymore, and it'll be kind of a t-shirt on demand. So that'll be good. I'm looking forward to that, uh, but right now we're still working toward the 30 pre-orders. Um, so if you'd like one of those, please click the link below in the description. Uh, last week the question was, how do you archive your video? And uh, it seems like uh, everybody kind of had the same solution, the one that I actually used, which is just you have one or two uh, backup drives and you're just constantly backing up stuff. Um, like I said last week, the way I did it was I took, I did projects on my laptop and when the memory ran out, I just backed them up. I probably should do that on a more regular basis um, instead of doing that way. Uh, but that's kind of what everybody else was doing. We didn't really learn any new or amazing ways to archive video. People were using hard drives or flash drives. So um, This week, the first question is KCB Zone, KCBS Zone made a comment on the Frugal Filmmaker FAC. They frequently ask questions. And they ask, when you build your rigs, do you do it twice or just take them apart to show us? Well, uh, yes, I do it twice. I put the rigs together to make sure that they work, um, make whatever tweaks I need to so that they work uh, at an acceptable level to publish them. And then I take them all apart, set them up on my uh, kitchen counter that you see in every video. That's the one where my hands are constantly appearing. And uh, then I reassemble them on camera. Uh, that's just, that to me, that seems the best way to do it. I mean, I could always take an existing, and I've done this a couple times, take an existing build and and just show it and say, well, this is how I did it. But I think people seem to like it better when I actually build the thing, um, giving pretty detailed directions. So that's how I do that. Let me cut and dry. Uh, the Hello Kinky made a comment on the recap show from last week, the How Do You Archive Your Video? And they ask, uh, have you ever filmed a full-length film? If so, where can I watch it? And I've also had several... Uh, requests lately for people to tell me where my stuff is and I, I there's a link on the uh, YouTube channel page that has recent short films since I'm in grad school right now and I've been making some shorts there you can see those there as far as a full-length film I've never done a full-length film the longest thing I've done is a web series called Midnight that I did for a web company that I was working for and you can watch that uh, I'll put a link below midnight.tv but it's spelled funny M-I-D-N-Y-T-E dot TV. And why did I do that? Well, because Midnight, the regular spelling was taken um, as far as a domain name goes. So I thought I'd be clever and come up with something uh, different for the web address name. However, that's something I've learned never to do because every time you hand out the web address, you'll have to spell it for people um, and they may forget it later. So if it's not traditional spelling, I highly recommend whatever your movie title is or whatever your domain name is, whatever your product is, don't use funny spellings because that will just, you'll lose people before they even get to your website. So at any rate, uh, if you watched all the episodes, it's a 12 episode web series that I did back in 2009. Um, if you watch them all back to back, it'll take about an hour. So it's not even really a feature length. It's more like a long short. 
Uh, it's close. I mean, 60 minutes. That's fairly close. Anyway, now uh, I will put the, the <laughs> I will put the link to that below. Excuse me, I can't talk very well. Fighting a cold in the description below, and you can check that out. And I'd be more than happy to hear your feedback on that production. Um, as far as the other stuff goes, I've mentioned how I want to get back into making more films because I am I do claim to be a filmmaker, so I would like to do that more often, and that's something I am going to do. In fact, the original originally the goal you know was to have three uh, some type of you know DIY show in the middle of the week, the recap show, and then Wednesday or Thursday have a DIY show, whatever it is, whether it's you know the frugal filmmaker I'm actually building something, the one dollar budget show, or the tip show. Those will be the first three weeks of the month, and the fourth week will be a short film. Um, and hopefully, ideally, I can do a short film on that in the middle of the week, and then at the end of the week on a Friday, I want to also do a making of episode so I can share the things I learned while I made that film and whatever behind the scenes video. That's what I want to do ideally. Um, I need to get back into that groove because that's what I want to do, so that's what I should be doing. Um, if you want to be a writer, write. If you want to be a filmmaker, make films. That's uh, that's how you learn. So I want to do that as well. All right, All Brawy Media sent me a message. I am a beginner and willing to film a family wedding coming up soon. I need some help with what lights should I use that does not blur guest vision and a great camcorder which has background unfocused. I'm looking for better audio and unfocused background feature. I need to spend less than $1,200. Please help. I have only two weeks left to the event. Okay, well, let's just uh, go through this background unfocused feature. Um, I'm pretty sure you mean shallow depth of field, uh, where the uh, subject or the foreground is in focus, or the select whatever plane you're focusing on is in focus, and the, and the one behind the subject or directly in front of the camera is out of focus, shallow depth of field. Um, that is not you're not going to find that on a camcorder. First of all, you're going to need to get a, a DSLR or a camera with interchangeable lenses. Or I guess you could get a cam. Well, you never get a camcorder. Maybe a video camera, like an expensive one with a real, you know, lens on it that you can uh, exchange, like the uh, Canon XL1 um, from the past. Uh, but right now, if you're looking to, of course, you don't mention if you want HD video. I'm assuming you want HD. Uh, that would just be the best way to go. Anyway. So with a $1,200 budget, which also leads to the question we have above here, you know, what camera would you get for? I'm going to round it down to $1,000. I think that's just a nice even number. Um, but if it were me and I had that kind of money, um, you've got all kinds of choices for interchangeable lens cameras. Uh, if you want to spend the least amount of money, uh, $500, the interchangeable lens camera, you can get the uh, Sony NEX uh, 5N right now. It's a micro four thirds camera. You can put different lenses on it. Um, then it goes all the way up. So uh, you've got all the Canons, you know, the the T2i, the T3i, the T4i, uh, the Canon 60D, the Canon 7D, which I believe exceeds our budget. But all those Canon cameras have interchangeable lenses. Uh, then there's also the Panasonic GH2, which is really popular. Um, I think the most expensive of all those cameras is probably the 60D, which is like $800 maybe for the body only. You're gonna have to spend some money on lenses, which I guess is why we should also um, stay under the thousand dollars because you're going to want to get a lens or two. If it were me and I uh, and I had all those choices, I would get probably the Panasonic. I've always leaned toward that, the GH2. Uh, I like it because the the number one reason I think is because all those cameras you know use interchangeable lenses, uh, but the GH2 shoots in AVC HD, uh, which so does the the Sony the NEX 5N. Um, and that's just more friendlier to edit, at least with my editor, which is Sony Vegas. I don't have to go through any kind of transcoding when I'm using that codec. Like all the Canons are going to use H.264 and uh, quick in a QuickTime uh, wrapper. And when I put those in my editor, it's Stutterville, and I have to transcode it just like if you use Final Cut Pro. Uh, you have to transcode it to Pro, a ProRes file to be able to edit. To me, that's a huge hassle. I would rather just skip that all together and get a camera that doesn't need to be have transcoded video. Uh, but that's just my personal preference. So the Panasonic GH2, which you can get right now with the, for the body for about $700 uh, on Amazon. I think that's a really good deal. I wish I had $700 so I could get that camera because I'm really, you know, with the with the way things are going, I'd really like to have a DP's camera. I'm using mostly video cameras to do stuff like this, and I'd really like to have a, um, a cinematographer's camera so I could, you know, experiment more. But 
That's just me. Now, with that being said, I should also add that if you've got an event in two weeks, or less than two weeks now, because this uh, actually was sent to me on August 30th, uh, is that enough time to get to know a brand new camera? And especially when you're dealing with all the issues that come with shallow depth of field, namely uh, keeping critical focus. So, if you're really going to jump in and do that, I mean, if it were me, I, don't, I wouldn't use a DSLR for a wedding. I would just use a standard video camera because it's just easier. But if your client is requesting shallow depth of field, uh, make sure you bill them appropriately for it because it is a bigger hassle. The equipment's different. It takes more maintenance. you got to you know watch it more carefully. You can't get away with as much unless you're shooting deep focus, which you can do with an interchangeable lens camera, just like a video camera. But you, you don't want that. You want background unfocused. So... Anyway, those are my recommendations. I'll put some links below to some Amazon links to where those cameras are that I just mentioned, and you can take your pick. But it's a, there's going to be a learning curve there, so make sure you get them ASAP and start messing with them because there's so much to, to learn. As far as the lighting issue goes, usually at weddings, like when I've shot weddings, you really only get available light. If you're going to slap lights onto the camera, if you're going to move, uh, you know, have a rig like the PVC stabilizer rig, you're going to move around and uh, photograph people with that. You obviously don't want your light to be too powerful, but I've always found out that after the wedding, because I usually don't put up lights for the wedding itself, use available light so that you're not intruding on the ceremony. Um, but once you get to the reception and you're recording that, uh, a lot of times it's indoors. If it's outdoors, great. You know, then you have the available sunlight. If it's indoors, a lot of times it's too dark. So I would say put a light on the camera that's not going to, like I said, you don't want to blind people. It doesn't blur guest vision. So... Pick something that's uh, weak, some kind of a LED light probably. There's that one from Harbor Freight that we mentioned before. And then you can put a sock over it to diffuse it. Um, those are like three bucks. Attach those to your rig. Um, that's what I would do. So if any of you have any better comments or other comments or cameras that you like, an interchangeable lens camera that will allow shallow depth of field um, for $1,000 or less, Please leave a comment below and help out Al Brawi Media. And me too, because I, I'm, I'm in definitely looking around and getting an interchangeable lens camera. I'd like to hear about any good ones out there that I haven't seen or mentioned. So that's it for this Labor Day, for the, the recap Q&A. It's early. Um, so if you're making movies this week, good luck on your projects. And watch for the video this Wednesday or Thursday, and we'll see you next week.